Hey everyone. So yeah, I wasn't even planning on talking about this chapter, but af at least not until tomorrow. But after reading it myself, I yeah, I had to talk about it. And honestly, even when I was writing this review, I still didn't know where to begin with this chapter. So I guess let's just start small. Kobe's been kidnapped by Blackbeard, and yeah, it says something went when that's the smallest detail to take from right now. Because the thing is. Obviously, we know the moment this news reaches Luffy, he's going to want to go charging in and save him because whatever dividing line of the law separates both Luffy and Kobe, at the core, they are still friends. Thing is, Blackbeard himself more than likely doesn't know they're friends. He probably only kidnapped Kobe to use him as a bargaining chip with the Navy. But once he does realize this, just by Luffy coming to confront Blackbeard, because let's be real, that's probably what's going to happen... He, Blackbeard is likely, Blackbeard himself is likely to shift focus, and assuming it goes the way I imagine it will, he'll use the opportunity to barter Kobe's life in exchange for mate for Robin. And I, I know this is something I've probably overly discussed at this point, but like the pieces just fit too well into place for me to, for me like, for, for, for me not to think about or my mind to. To, 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 like for, for, for my mind to, to immediately like not go in that direction like the only wild card that's still in play with this situation honestly is shanks and to a certain and garp as well like i feel i feel garp and shanks with with koei being thrown into the mix of being kidnapped by blackbeard th that kind of immediately throws garp into the mix as well and and i feel i feel these the I feel both Scarp and Shanks are the two are the two biggest unknowns that could flip the situation on its head even more, and would and honestly in certain ways would be kind of narrative genius in the sense of forcing the two extremes in Luffy's life to like possibly work together and actually talk things out about their gripes with each other or at least all of Garp's gripes with Shanks and of course again if Shanks does get involved that is all but going to sure he's going to die like i know that's another thing i talk about constantly but something has to be like when it comes to blackbeard right now something has to be the linchpin for, for luffy to realize just how dangerous he this guy this motherfucker is because because luffy himself even though he's had interactions with blackbeard he hasn't had any chance to really see just how powerful and how dangerous blackbeard is so it's like this is kind of setting things in motion for, for Luffy to finally understand just what kind of a threat Blackbeard is. Like, Blackbeard, which, yeah, speaking of Blackbeard, though, like, what can I say? The man came in, wrecked shop, and truly established why he should be taken seriously as a threat, which is, like, something we knew already, but it's one of those displays of power that truly show he has the power of someone who really could conquer the sea. And even more so, like, what he's essentially done here is basically really set the stage that the time of the Navy, the time of the Warlords, it's all but over. <clears throat> it's time for the real monsters to step, to, in order to set their foot in this race. Like, for, for anyone who considers themselves themself a true pirate, anyone who considers themselves a true, a true emperor of the sea, Step up to the plate and start and rise up and rise up. Sh sh show them your power, that kind of thing. Like, our, like the time of pi the time of true pirates is now, kind of thing. Like that. That's basically what white. That's basically what Blackbeard did here. Of course, <clears throat> it isn't. Of course, we gotta keep it fair. We gotta talk about the other side of that coin, which is that we learned the reason the government and navy was okay with abandoning the warlords to begin with was because, well, from what we've learned, the pacifista program has been perfected with, obviously with assume, obviously with Vegapunk's help, like they've they've manufactured perfect human replicants of warlords. And other known pirates like King into perfect, the perfect, the perfect like weapons into perfect human weapons. Like like the, 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 these are the final forms of the pacifista. And <clears throat> judging from the 
Judging from the display of power they showed, it's doubtful these ones are going to be as easy to destroy as the old models. Like th these ones are, these ones are already making the Kuma models seem vastly inferior and obsolete. And it, in some ways, it really is tragic to think that his entire life, the only thing Kuma has ever been is a test subject, and only for, and really, when you get down to it, only for initial testing as the reveal of these new models has shown, and. Like and just how these new models also just seeing these new models also goes a long way towards explaining why he was so why the why Kuma was so easily passed around by the celestial dragons after the time skip because he's one of those obsolete models now and that's not even getting into what Shaki made note of which is that the Navy's current strength and advancements in in technology have made it to where really no safe there is really no safe haven for pirates to escape from at this point not even the com belt and it just really gets perspective that this whole situation is blowing up so far out of control that like war is on the horizon we're pretty much like we are at we are officially at war now whether or not luffy whether or not like luffy even realizes that or not like War has begun. E even if, even if he doesn't want to get involved, he's going to be involved now. And oh yeah, it's um, it's it's really just kind of insane. Like this, what can I say? This Blackbeard really just Blackbeard. I'm honestly like even even Black like again Blackbeard. He 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 he, he really kind of he rung the starting bell for for, for, for this whole war to begin. Like. Blackbeard, I guess, and Blackbeard and the Navy like really rung the starting bells for this war to begin. Like it really is, it's really insane just how, just just how close, just how close it already feels that that, that we're getting to the <clears throat> that we're getting to the climax of of One Piece already. Like it's it's kind of insane, and and that's another thing is that po post Wano, I was always kind of curious as to how. Like, with, with Lord of saying that there's only going to be three years left, I was kind of curious how the pacing was going to be post Wano, but, but, um, yeah, but, th but this, this and many other chapters I've read so far have shown that, yeah, Oda is going all in. He is, he is going, he is going full stop, full speed. I am, I am getting us, getting us to, to, the, I'm getting us to, to, to the, to, to the whole throne wars in three years. In, in, I'm getting us to the whole throne wars. Like that's that's the goal for him right now, and it is working. Honestly, it really is working. Um, now, with all that being said, I am curious exactly how Rayleigh managed to talk down the whole situation between Blackbeard and Hancock. Because when first reading the chapter, my first thought was that he offered Kobe up as a sacrifice in exchange for Hancock's life. But I'm imagining if anything, Kobe would have done that regardless. And even then, even then, like Kobe himself, he, he doesn't have an inherent value to, to 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 Blackbeard, to Blackbeard outside of just as a bargaining ship to the Navy. So, what it so just raises the question of what did Rayleigh offer Blackbeard? Because it, it had to have been something major to get him to leave. And the only other thing that comes to mind is some kind of knowledge in regards to the Poneglyphs or the One Piece, because. The only other thing I can think would be telling him about Robin, but which, but which, which would make sense as I don't know whether or not it was established that he knows of her ability to read the Poneglyphs, but I take that part, that part of it with a great, a bit of a grain of salt because it, it would just feel out of character for really in order to out Robin like that. And I, again, I don't even know if if Blackbeard is even aware of her ability or not. <clears throat> and, yeah, but, 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 again, I am leaning more towards the direction that he did tell, that, that Rayleigh did give him information about, like, the Poneglyphs One Piece, something in that regard, just not something that involved Robin, maybe. And, yeah, again, talking about the new pacifistas, we gotta meet Vegapunk. Like, I know I keep saying that again and again, but because... Because things have reached such a boiling point in the series, it's honestly just becoming more and more unavoidable in terms of keeping this guy as as the vague presence that he's been this entire time. Like we need to either meet the guy 
confirm he's dead or see that he's like a brain in a jar or a brain in a robot body, Dr. Zero style. Because just, <clears throat> just something that gives clarity as to what Vegapunk's like status in this world is and what his motives are. Because I, I get keeping him, I get keeping the idea behind keeping him an enigma this entire time, but it's getting harder to keep him that enigma. Like we really just need to know what it is he is. But, um, what, what he is, who he is, just all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Anyways Control. Be sure to the notification bell, the subscribe button, and just share it around, guys. Dark Night of Renee, signing off. Later, everyone.